Shalom, Shalom, Yasharala. This is the brother Nathan Manat. Coming at you with a little lot lesson right here. Hopefully this is edifying and comforting. But uh, before I begin, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to the head apostles and elders, bishops, teachers of Great Millstone, rule well, teach well. To all the brothers out there, the Akim, who are pushing this truth in 100% sincerity. Shalom. May you be blessed in these latter days. To the believers, 12 tribes of Israel, so called Negroes, Latinos, North American Indians, all the uh, Central American Indian, uh, Latinos, and uh, all the other Israelite foreigners that are scattered across the world. Four winds, may you be blessed. May we seek repentance and salvation in these latter days. And I just want to come back at you guys with a short lesson, real quick. Hopefully, it's edifying you know, through the Holy Spirit. And uh, hear that trumpet. You know, it's about uh, it's about that time. You know, as the prophets, you know, and the brothers out there pushing this this word and this truth. You know, the Holy Scriptures. You know, they're out there pushing this word, blowing that trumpet. Uh, which wants to, I just want to take it into a, a reading from the Book of Numbers. I want to go to Numbers chapter ten. Numbers chapter 10 and it's verse 8 and it reads and the sons of Aaron the priests shall blow with the trumpets and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations and if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your power, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. You know, and that's uh, that's what the brothers are doing out there right now, getting ready. We know what time it is. You know, we have to prepare ourselves, and uh, you know, mentally, spiritually. You know, we have to prepare ourselves for what's about to come. You know, in these latter days, entering Jacob's trouble, and uh, you know. Everything that's, you know, it's going to be coming down the line in between, uh, you know, mandates that are con going to continue to increase, you know, the sedition amongst people, the uproar, uprisings, you know, martial law, so on and so forth. You know, we got to get ready for this. And uh, there's no better way than to continue to embed ourselves and hearken to this truth, you know, the Holy Scriptures and under the law, statutes, and the commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you know, because we have to fear the Lord. Fear the Most High. That's the only way that you know we're gonna be able to push through, and, and you know that's the only way to salvation. But we have to continue to hearken to these trumpets that are blowing in this word. You know the warnings that are going out there. So for those who haven't yet done so, um, you know who haven't don't who don't have that in their mind and in their spirit and their heart, then you know we definitely gotta gotta get with it quick. You know, I want to take it now to a reading from the book of Zephaniah. Let's lock it. Get my spot here. Let's lock it, yo. <clears throat> a reading from the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, and verse 14. It's going to read The great day of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is near. It is near. And hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man, shall cry there bitterly. So the mighty man, anyone who's thinking that they're going to take their things into their own hands. You know, the mighty man who think that with their own strength, their own arms and their own, you know, referred to in the scriptures as bows. And, you know, it says that in the Holy Scriptures, roughly, roughly paraphrasing, we will not be saved by our, our own bow and our own strength. So the mighty man shall cry there bitterly, meaning that if we're not going to trust in the Most High and if we're not seeking salvation and repentance in the, the ways that the Most High approves of, then, you know, they're not going to be, ultimately, they won't see that salvation that will come through Yahweh Shai and the Holy Angels, through the chariots, before the great destruction comes to Babylon the Great, spiritually Sodom and Gomorrah, spiritually Egypt, spiritually Babylon. 
This is America we're talking about here. Zephaniah 1 and 15. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. So this is again talking about Babylon the Great here. All these people who are thinking they're going to be able to hide behind their gated communities, their high fences, their high towers, so on and so forth, build themselves up, you know, whether it be physically in these houses on the hills, quote unquote, you know, and, and even going into, uh, you know, a lot of other forms of it, you know, the book of, uh, you know, Obadiah, I believe refers to, you know, people trying to build a nest in the stars, you know, trying to exalt themselves as the eagle. And then uh, burying themselves in hell, these underground bunkers, so on and so forth. It's not going to protect them in the great day, in the great and terrible day of the Lord. Um, Zephaniah 1 and 17. I will bring stress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Dung meaning feces, shit. Verse 18, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make men even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. That's right. Lord's destruction, his wrath, his indignation, you know, that revenge, you know, our Lord is a jealous God, it says in the scriptures, you know, roughly paraphrasing, but he is a jealous God, and, and that wrath is going to be coming upon those who are not, you know, seeking repentance again, and, and his mercy, and forgiveness, and walking uprightly on that straight, narrow path, I want to get into, uh, so for us who, who, who can hearken, you know, thus, you know, really seek this mercy, you know, and who continue to do so day in and day out, you know, with every day that's given by the Lord, then we can, you know, continue to hope on that and have hope in that faith and let it continue to grow, wax stronger and not, you know, wax hotter, not colder. We have to really continue to hearken to this. Otherwise, you know, we know what's coming to the two-thirds and we know what's coming to the wicked, you know, so on and so forth. I'm going to take it to a book of reading, uh, Zephaniah chapter 2. Let's start from the top. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather yourself, gather together. O nation not desired. So nation not desired, you know, the nation of Israel. We haven't been desired on this earth, you know, in this carnal flesh. You know, we're a proverb, as the scriptures say. You know, we're, we're looked at as, as something that's, that's not desirable, that's less. You know, we're inferior to all these other, you know, so-called nations, you know, all these other so-called white people, these Edomites, you know, and the Moabites and so on and so forth, Ishmaelites, you know, so on and so forth. You know, a lot of them um, look down on the tribes, you know, the 12 tribes and our people. And it's been that way for hundreds, if not thousands of years. But uh, the great terrible day of the Lord again is coming. And, and on those, and on that day, you know, we're going to be, uh, you know, the Lord's going to prove otherwise what his people really are, who his people really are. Let's go to verse two, Zephaniah two and two. Before the decree bring forth before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So again, we want to seek 
the, the cover, you know, under the shadow of his of thy wings, you know, that roughly paraphrasing the scriptures again, you know, that's under the defense of the Lord and his holy angels, under Yahweh Shai, through the Holy Spirit, we have to be able to come together as 12 tribes, as his people. And for those who don't, well, they're going to be, they're going to be a part of that destruction. So we have to continue to, you know, hearken to this word, come together as his people, because he's pleading with us. This is a warning. This is that trumpet blowing. Now, you know, I want to take it into uh, the Apocrypha here. I want to take it into Wisdom of Solomon. In Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17. I want to take it to verse 12. And it reads, Wisdom of Solomon, of Solomon 17 and 12. For fear is nothing else but a betraying of the succors which reason offereth. Succors meaning assistance, help in the time of, of distress. So for fear is nothing else but a betraying of that which reason offereth. And what's that reason? This truth. Under Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. This truth is the reason why, you know, it's offering to us, the people, you know, the 12 tribes, Yasharala, the hopeful elect, Shalom. You know, and we have to continue to uh, understand that. And we can't veer away from this path. So that's our reason in this truth. And it says, verse Wisdom of Solomon 17 and 13, and the expectation from within being less counted the counteth the ignorance more than the cause which bringeth the torment so the expectation from within and and uh, counteth counteth the ignorance more than the cause which bringeth the torment so if we're ignorant to this truth and we are not abiding by the law statutes and commandments to the best of our ability and seeking you know to be diligent and obedient you know, and to seek wisdom and knowledge through the scriptures, through study and sacrifice to the Most High, and that we're being ignorant to the truth. Well, first, uh, Solomon, Wisdom of Solomon 17 and 14. But they, sleeping the same sleep that night, which was indeed intolerable, and which came upon them out of the bottoms of inevitable hell. You know, tossing and turning, not understanding these people that are not uh, not with this truth. You know, it says we're partly vexed with monstrous apparitions and partly fainted, their heart failing them. So apparitions meaning like visions and a lack of understanding. You know, things that are not really there. It says uh, for a sudden fear and not looked for came upon them. That's right. So, you know, these people are, are going to be tormented by their lack of understanding, their lack of wisdom through the Holy Scriptures, through this truth. And uh, it's, a, it's a shame, but you know what? That's, that's going to be the two thirds. It's going to be these stubborn people, you know, stubborn Jake. Everyone is trying to seek, you know, their own, you know, form of understanding. And that's not something that the Scriptures, you know, say. This is uh, trust not your own understanding, roughly paraphrasing. So... When this time comes, you know, that's, they're going to be, they're going to be prisoners of their own minds, you know, and their own lack of understanding. It's like it says right here, um, Wisdom of Solomon 17 and 16. So then whosoever there fell down was straightly kept, shut up in a prison without iron bars. So that's what it's comparing it to, you know. And we can't be those type of, you know, we have to be free, free in this truth in the spirit yeah. and uh, I want to take it back to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 16 but I'm going to start from verse 24 it's lock here. Wisdom of Solomon 16 24 reads for the creature that serveth thee who art the maker increaseth his strength against the unrighteous for their punishment and abateth his strength for the benefit of such as put their trust in thee. 
So they, their strength, meaning they're they're lessening. You know, they're they're um, they're understanding that the strength is, is coming from the Most High, they're not trusting their own carnal flesh and their own carnal strength. You know, it says uh, verse Slakia yeah, verse twenty five says Wisdom of Solomon sixteen twenty five. Therefore, even then, was it altered into all fashions and was obedient to thy grace that nourisheth all things according to the desire of them that had heed. So again, desiring, you know, those things is nourishment from the Most High. He nourisheth all things according to the desire of them that had heed. So them that were heeding to this word, this truth, Verse 26, that thy children, O Lord, whom thou lovest, might know that it is not the growing fruits that nourisheth man, but that it is thy word which preserveth them that put their trust in thee. So what's going to preserve us? This truth that put we put our trust and our faith and our hope in the Most High, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, in the and through Yahweh Shai and the holy angels, the only begotten son and the angels, the holy angels, you know, they're going to bring that and under the almighty power of Yahweh. They're going to bring that salvation to the hopeful elect and to the one third, and the remnant of Jacob. And that's something that we got to continue to push for and pray on every day that is given to us by the Lord. And I want to take it now back into the reading from the book of Psalms. I'm going to take it to chapter 77. Psalm 77. I'm going to start at verse 10. And it reads, And I said, This is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of thy work and talk of thy doings. So remembering to meditate on these things and to pray on them and, and give thanks, honor, glory, and praises because the Most High has, has always been there to deliver our people, our forefathers. And we have to remember that. And, and it's right here in the scriptures, you know, time and time again, the Lord's great presence and his wondrous works have been there to be the, the, uh, the aid of our people. So I want to go to uh, Psalm 77 and 13. Thy way, O Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, is in the sanctuary, who is so great a power as our power. Thou art the power that dost wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. The people of the 12 tribes. Again, the covenant, you know, the remnant of Jacob. This verse 50, Psalm 77, 15. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Salah. That's right. So again, proving that the Lord will and has always continued to be there for the sons of Jacob and Joseph. You know, be there for Yasharala. We're the remnant. We got to, and then, you know, the prophets of old have come back to blow this trumpet, to warn the people. So we have to hear that warning and we got to get ready. Got to get ready because we know what's coming. So, you know, we can't we can't hang on to everything that's, you know, in this in this flesh, you know, in this carnal way of thinking in this world. We can't, you know, friendship with the world is enmity with the Lord, as the scriptures say, roughly paraphrasing. So, you know, we got we got to be ready to sacrifice it all to gain everlasting life in the kingdom. To serve the Lord, the Most High in the kingdom. And that's, you know, there's no greater reward than that. So I want to take it to a quick reading from the little precept from the book of Job, chapter 38, verse 3. It reads, 
Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. So again, answer the call. We have to be there. We got to show up. We made it. We got a contract. We got a promise with the Lord. This covenant. This promise. We got to fulfill our end. We have to do our works. Bring forth ripe fruit to the Lord. To Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. We have to do our, you know, we have to sacrifice. We have to suffer through the furnace of affliction. We have to suffer as Yahweh Shai suffered. As the prophets and elders and, and so on, our forefathers have done before us. We have to make those same sacrifices. Now more than ever. And I want to take it to a short precept. I'll end it with a short precept here from the book of 1 Peter. Chapter 1 and verse 13. Which reads, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the, re at the revelation of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So, at the revelation of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, it will be brought unto you, the remnant, the faithful, the hopeful elect, that one third. You know, 144, you know, we got to continue to, to be there, to answer the call. Answer thou me, says the Lord. We have to be there to answer that call. So let's continue to blow this trumpet until, you know, until we can't anymore. Until the Lord and the Holy Spirit tell us not to. Until then, you know, with every day that's given to us, we have to continue to do the work of the Lord. Walk uprightly. Let's not be afraid. Fear not. No, those aren't the ways of the Most High. It's right here. We have to trust this reason. This reason is our truth, our faith, our hope. You know? So, I hope that this lesson was, was edifying, was comforting in any type of way. I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Bukakadash. Yahweh being the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Paleo-Hebrew tongue means he is, he exists Yahweh Shai in the true name of the only begotten son which means he is salvation, he delivers once again want to give double honors to the head apostles, elders, teachers, bishops of great millstone who rule well and teach well across all four winds to the Akim, the Aqua Shalom, to the Akim who are pushing this truth and teaching you know, this doctrine Across all four corners, all, all nations, you know, all Israelite foreigners, you know, everybody out there pushing this word. Shalom, may peace be, peace and salutations be unto you. And uh, until the next time, I'll say Shalom.